so your high school curriculum, a lot of the kids are asking about math and science. Um, were you obviously to get into MIT, you have a, a, a skill set in that area, but um, were you always trying to take the, the highest level of math and science throughout high school? I was, um, you know, by senior, junior, senior year, I was taking a lot of the AP classes uh, in those subjects, as, as well as in history. I, I even took uh, AP art class. So um, I personally um, always, I, I really actually enjoyed English and history in my art class as well. I just naturally was better at math and science. Um, so it was definitely something I look to continue in the future as I went to college. And, you know, I knew I'd probably go into some sort of uh, STEM type field. Um, but yes, I, I did look to take the, you know, AP classes when I could and when those opportunities presented themselves. Um, and also did programs after school as well, you know, Science Olympiad. Um, we didn't have FIRST Robotics, but that's a really cool uh, program I know about now. Um, I don't know if that was wrong when I was a kid, but I didn't know about it. But I did math leads, all those sorts of uh, programs after school as well. Yeah. Um, and do you have to get all A's? You don't, and I did not. Um, and, you know, I, I told that story uh, earlier about even in college, I got a 24 out of 100. That's not, that definitely was not an A. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, you don't, but but you want to, you always want to put in put in your best, and I always strived to get A's, um, but sometimes it didn't happen. Yep. Um, all right, so we have some space questions for you. Um, I'll give you the the first one is what is your fl favorite planet and why? My favorite planet is planet Earth, <laughs> um, and you just, I mean, it's the only one I've ever been on so far, but you just look at look at what we have here it's it, it is the most beautiful planet in my uh, in my opinion uh, you know you just look at it even the pictures you see from space of it 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 looks so beautiful and everyone i know and love is is here on earth or a, a couple of them i guess orbiting around earth right now um so I, i've got to go with earth excellent um so so some other other questions have you been to space yet I have not. So I uh, recently graduated from our initial training. Um, so our class was selected in 2017. We finished our initial training in January of 2020, making us assignable to missions. Um, but my class has not been to space yet. Okay. Um, but I'm assuming that part of your training um, is, is pretty realistic to what you would be experiencing in space. So um, what does the food taste like? We do, we do get to taste some of the food and you know, they do an incredible job. So we have a whole food lab and they work really hard um, to make to make the food tasty for us. So, you know, water weighs a lot. So they try to save on things like water. So you add the water back in uh, once you're up there because we can regenerate a lot of it. Um, you know, it, it sounds gross, but from the from the urine we can we can salvage a lot of that and, and make it drinkable water so that we're not constantly have to, having to send water up from earth and things like that. Um, but they do a really good job. They've got a lot of good meals, but, um, oh, what? I'm trying to think like, what, what's the favorite one I've tasted so far? They're all pretty tasty, but uh, I think, well, I like the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a sweet tooth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So, um, does water float in space? Yes, and if you haven't gone and YouTube the videos of it, you should you should go check it out. There's some fun videos of astronauts uh, eating and drinking in space, but you can see it it um, you know like it adheres to itself, uh, and so it forms these balls in space, and and it's really cool to watch the liquids in space and and watch the astronauts. Uh, astronauts drink it floating through uh, the International Space Station. Some of the kids have noticed um, the things that are hanging on your walls. So um, are you a musician as well? I, I am, but I won't say I'm a, a great musician. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I've got a drum set behind me. I've got a couple of guitars and a bass and a keyboard over here on my left. Um, so I definitely like playing instruments and I love music. Uh, I won't say I'm great at any of them though. 
Excellent. Well, we are all we are all works in progress, right? Yeah. Um, so do you have a timeline of when you think you will um, go to space? You know, it's it's really hard to say. So um, normally training, um, once you're assigned, training is about usually a year and a half to two years. And so I'd say the soonest would be in about a year and a half to two years. Um, but it could be several years. You know, we have several people in the office and a lot of different missions coming up at different times, you know, obviously we have um, people on the International Space Station and we're continuing to regularly send up uh, new crews to the International Space Station. So it could be going there. And we're also with the Artemis missions talking about sending uh, people to the moon in the very near future. So uh, those missions coming up as well. So, you know, it, it, in a couple of years, uh, hopefully. Excellent. Um, are black holes real? Yes. <laughs> so I hear. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So you touched on some of your role models, um, your parents and your mother specifically when we were talking earlier. Um, but while you're in this process, this phase of your career, um, do you have role models that you rely on as you had entered the program and gone through your training? Yeah, absolutely. We actually, um, you know, I said this before. So when I got to the astronaut office, I was obviously a bit intimidated. There are all these incredible people, not just in the astronaut office, but at Johnson Space Center and NASA as a whole. And the thing I was most impressed with were that so many of the senior astronauts reached out to us and offered to help us and mentor us through different things. And um, one of the things I struggled with most was um, training in the neutral buoyancy lab. And so, um, you know, Tracy was someone who really uh, helped me with that and watched hours of videos with me. Uh, Sunny Williams, another member of the office, she's been a role model to me uh, for many years since I, um, I got to watch her launch on STS-116, um, I guess 15 years ago now. And so she's been a role model to me and coming into the office, she's been so kind and gracious and funny as she is. Um, so they've definitely been role models for me and, and helped mentor me since I've been in the office a lot. Excellent. Um, so the, the spacesuit, we've seen so many images of it. Um, is it heavy? How does it feel to wear it? And, um, and then the follow on to that is very COVID related with all of this training and people that are going to space, do you have to wear a mask? Okay, so first for the spacesuit, on Earth, yes, it is very heavy. And so, you know, we, we have the um, EMU, the extravehicular mobility unit, that's the space, you know, there's a spacewalk going on right now. It might, it might be coming to an end now, but if, if you got to watch it, oh, there's a spacewalk going on. And so that suit back here on Earth is several hundred pounds, but obviously in, in space, you get that sense of uh, weightlessness. So orbiting around the Earth, they don't feel, um, feel the weight of the suit. Um, but that makes it, that does make it challenging to try and train in that suit here on Earth because we do have uh, the sense of the heaviness, which is why we have the pool that we use to try and, um, you know, get rid of that a bit. And then we're working on the suits that we're going to use as we go uh, back to the moon and things like that. So with that, you will feel, you know, about a sixth the weight of it. So um, back here on Earth, though, they are generally three, four hundred pound suits. Wow. Um, in terms of uh, wearing the mask, we do wear masks here on Earth. We, you know, we're just as susceptible to getting COVID as anyone else. So we have lots of mitigations in place. We, as much as possible, keep our distance from one another. We do things virtually if we can. And for the events, obviously, we need to come in for training and things like that. We all wear our masks uh, and things like that. But once we get in the spacesuit, um, we don't we don't have to wear the mask anymore because um, that would hinder our training. And, and at that point, you're kind of in your own environment. Yeah. Um, so you've, you've started your mission. You're now in space. What is a day in the life look like for you guys up there? What mission am I on? Am I at the International Space Station? So let's, let's say I'm at the International Space yeah. Station, right? So a day could be a day like today. They're having 
their main focus is on the spacewalk two astronauts outside the space station that's you know one of the most dangerous things we do you think about it they're each in their own uh, little spacecraft and um, you need for everything to go right and you need for everyone to be really focused on that mission to make sure they come back in the airlock safe and sound. Uh, on another day you're doing uh, scientific research, um, you could be, you know, Kate Rubens who's up there now, she sequenced DNA for the first time in space a few years ago. Um, so research like that, they're doing experiments on themselves, you know, our human bodies are experiments as well, because we want to see how do we react in space, you know, medically, things like that. So we're our own subjects. Performing maintenance, things break up there. We are the maintainers up there. We don't have separate mechanics. Um, we're the doctors. We're everything. So each day could could look a little different. But uh, I'll say that from sitting in, in Capcom and Mission Control and talking to the crew, they're always very busy. Yeah. Um, I would think that there are a lot of, like you kind of touched on the physical demands on your body um, in in space. So what kind of training do you do on Earth uh, to make sure that you are physically prepared for the mission? Yeah, definitely being physically fit is really important. And, um, you know, here on Earth, I think everyone coming into the, the office um, already um, understood the importance of having your own discipline and taking care of your uh, own body physically. And, and that was a, you know, me being in the Marine Corps is part of my job to be in shape anyway. You know, we do physical fitness tests uh, twice a year. And so that was already ingrained in me from sports, from the Marine Corps. Um, so it's, it's on you to maintain your own physical fitness. But then, you know, once we get in space, the astronauts on their schedule have two, two and a half hours every single day um, to work out, which sounds like a lot, but um, you know, when you have that weightlessness, you need to be working out to keep your um, bone density and, and everything intact. So it's, it's really important to, to have a good discipline about uh, physical fitness. Yeah. I know we only have a few more minutes, so I'm gonna ask you two more questions. The first one is from Pakistan. Um, Please tell me what motivates you to keep pursuing this dream of becoming an astronaut. And did you face any difficulties specifically because you're a woman? So what motivates me, I think it's just um, my, I'm just very passionate about this. Um, you know, this is, it's technically a job for me, but it doesn't feel that way. Um, Exploring space uh, and human exploration of space, uh, to me, I find very important. I think it's something that humans in general, we've always, we've always been explorers. And I think we need to continue that and continue pushing that boundary further and further. You know, now we've made it to space, uh, going back to the moon and going on to Mars. So I think that's really important. And so that and just my, I think I just love what I do. So that motivates me to keep going, even though there are days that are difficult and certainly times that uh, I question my abilities or things like that. And in terms of um, facing challenges as a woman, th there are times definitely, um, you know, we've come a long way just in my life in terms of what what women uh, are have been allowed to do. And I, I firmly believe we're capable of doing anything that any, you know, I can do anything anyone else can uh, in my mind. You just need to to give me the opportunity. And luckily the the woman, women before us have kind of opened many doors for us. But when I was born, women couldn't be pilots in the Marine Corps. By the time I got to um, that point in my life, we were able to, but there were still a lot of restrictions on what we could do and certain combat uh, combat arms were closed to us. And so that then in turn limited certain training opportunities I had. I asked to go um, to this, this training that would have been really good for my career in the, in the Marine Corps. And I was denied because I was a woman and a, a woman and women weren't allowed to go um, to that course. And, and that wasn't, that wasn't the only time that happened, unfortunately. So there have definitely been times where uh, doors were closed, but guess what? Those doors, since I've been in the Marine Corps have opened. So I think we just need to continue to uh, to push in this and to improve ourselves and show that we can do these things. Yeah. What um what is something you still struggle with today? What's what's the challenge that you're you're still pushing yourself to overcome? You know, I think the 
the hardest part for me is often um, believing I belong. So I look around um, and I see so many incredible, like I'm not the strongest person here. I'm not the smartest person here. Um, people are faster, people are this or that. And, and I question myself and, you know, how did I get here? Why am I here? Should I be here? And so for me, it's constantly reminding myself that, yes, I do belong here. And um, yes, I can do these things. And I, and I've proven that over time. And I think that's something that a lot of uh, young women struggle with as well. And so, um, you know, just, just remember that you belong just as much as anyone else and, and you can do it. And that's something that still to this day as an astronaut, I still have to constantly remind myself of that. Yeah. And I think, I think that's such a great, uh, lesson because I think that affects everybody on, uh, on this zoom today is a comparison to others and saying that you're not as good as so-and-so. So it's uh, interesting to hear a NASA astronaut have that same, uh, battle, internal battle with themselves. Um, yeah, just know that those other people are probably thinking the same thing, so. <laughs> yeah, so um, one other thing that I do wanna point out because, um, uh, you know, in my job, I talk to a lot of pilots and, and there's this question of, can I have a family and still uh, be a pilot? Um, so I would think that that question is even stronger for a NASA astronaut. So are you a mother? I actually, I am, I just became a mother not even three months ago. So I, I had twin girls um, on December 17th of this past year. Um, and I will tell you, it's, it was something I wasn't sure I wanted to do because I was always so career oriented and I, and I thought, oh, maybe this will detract from it. And, and I can tell you um, with, with planning and luckily we have a very supportive office here. Um, it's been the most incredible experience of my life. And, uh, and so you, you can do both, but you know, it is, it is a challenge, right? You do need to tackle it like anything else and plan for it and have a support structure in place and, and do all those things. It's, it's not a, it's not as easy, but exactly. definitely you can do both. Excellent. I'm sure that, I'm sure that makes a lot of people happy on this uh, Zoom today to know that it's <laughs> not one or the other. Um, I, I know that you, uh, you have a, a short window with us today. Um, thank you so much for taking time to video that with me and now Absolutely. live with all of our participants today. Uh, you know, uh, kids, if you have any additional questions, just you guys can shoot them to, to myself or anybody else and we can try to get them answered for you. So thank you, Jasmine. Thanks so much, Allison. And, and thanks to all the girls that they're watching.